Hi, my name is Lorena Lopez, and I'm here at Education 2.0 Conference. Now I have a very special guest. Um, please introduce yourself and what organization you're representing. Yeah, I'm Greg Aiden. I own uh, Aiden Leadership, which is an exalt, uh, leadership development consulting firm. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. How long have you been in the industry? It'll be nine years at the end of this year. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Is it your first time attending the conference? First time at this conference, yes. Now, what has been your overall experience? Well, I uh, facilitated a fantastic panel with five other panelists, and they were rock stars. We, they all had met yesterday in the afternoon, so they were prepared. They fed me questions uh, last evening. I studied them on the flight out from Denver, and we ham and egged it, and we did really well. It was fun. Wow. Yeah. So, yeah, I had, I've met too many people, but uh, my, my co-workers were fantastic. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah. That's really awesome. Now, being on the panel and, you know, obviously getting to, I guess, learn other mindsets, um, what has been your experience with the networking and how does that contribute to your success in the future? Well, again, facilitating the panel today, it was actually on the difference between the fixed mindset and the growth mindset. Oh, okay. And it's Carol uh, Dweck's work that we kind of modeled our, our talk around. Mm -hmm. But it was, how do, you, how do you get the younger generation to understand the power of the growth mindset and not be fixed? So not so much networking, but that was, that was the most powerful experience so far. Die. And I just flew in this morning, so this oh. this evening's reception will be my first networking opportunity. That's exciting. And I, but I met some nice people uh, just roaming the halls and asking questions. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. So what advice would you give to someone that is following your footsteps or wanting to get in the industry? I would say anyone following my footsteps, uh, you're going to have fun. Uh, don't take yourself too serious. Uh, be authentically curious, and that means ask questions, but real questions, not to be judgmental. Um, be kind, be considerate, and be humble. And as a 60-year-old man, anyone that's following my footsteps, you'll realize that there was a part of time where I wasn't what I'm asking you to do, uh, but then now I am. So I know this doesn't work, and what I'm asking you to do does work. Wow. Yeah. That is a good foundation. <laughs> so far, dark yeah. on wood. Yeah, yes. Wow. So where can others reach you for collaboration purposes or maybe to seek advice? Yeah. LinkedIn is probably the easiest way to find me. It's just Greg Aiden, G-R-E-G-A-D-E-N. I also have a page, Aiden Leadership, or again, really difficult, AidenLeadership.com. And most of the people that find me uh, have been referred by somebody else. Okay. Uh, so the network is large, but the, the people I actually end up serving as a coach or an executive consultant are someone else has experienced me and they recommend me to them. So as, as much as I like my site and as much as I like LinkedIn, uh, almost 98% of the people I have done work with, they've experienced someone else. Someone else has experienced me and they say, you need to see Greg or you might want to meet with Greg. And that's, again, I'm very, very grateful for that. That yeah. is amazing. Obviously, it speaks about a lot about, you know, what you provide and your character and everything. Yeah. Well, yeah. And if, if you were to say, if you, how, how could I describe my, my style in one sentence? It would be, I'm challenging, but in a loving way. Um, and if you want to be appeased and pleased, I'm not your guy. If you want to be challenged and <laughs> elevated uh, as a leader, mm -hmm. then I can help you get there. And what I love about this conference and the, the fact that we were talking about education is I've been on this platform for years that uh, and our, our, our teachers are underappreciated. Mm -hmm. Parenting is, is underrated and not taken serious enough. And I believe if we don't start parenting as leaders instead of parenting as appeasers, uh, our country's not going to get any better. Wow. Yeah, That is a great concept, especially for parenting. Because kids don't do what they say, they do what they do, right? <laughs> they do what you do. <laughs> well, and if you're, again, as a father of an 11 and a 13-year-old, if, if I appease them or please mm -hmm. them or come every time they cry and, and then turn around, they do the same behavior, I have to look at myself in the mirror and say, what can I do to elevate them? Yeah. Uh, again, I'm not trying to teach them to be 
leaders as, as, as young men and women, but I am trying to get them to be responsible for their words. I, I call it as responsible for your thoughts, which come from our beliefs, your words, your actions, and then what kind of relationships are you, do you want? And people always say, well, I need, I need, I need. And I say, put the needs on, on the back burner for a second. What, do you, what is it that you really want? What do you want to accomplish? Who do you want to be with? How far do you want to walk? And needs are very, you know, we all have them. Absolutely. Food, water, transportation, roof over our head, a, a good friend here or there. But really, what wants drives us. Awesome concept. Um, is there any like advice that you would give parents out there to, I guess, start instilling in their kids the growth mindset versus the fixed mindset? Yeah, it's uh, it's <laughs> quit pushing failure as as an option. It's they may not get there, but then something again. Carol Dweck says is it's it's not about failing. It's about you're just not there yet. Uh, so remind them that you keep trying. So the the, the juice is in the effort, not just the results. And I think we get in our, in our country in schools, and especially the privileged schools, it's um, look at what I've achieved. Look at what I own. Look at what I drive. Look how much my, bi my big house. And again, at the end of the day, none of that crap's going to matter. What really matters are your relationships. And those can only be as authentic as you as you show up. So to my advice to the parents, as you asked very succinctly, would be be more curious mm -hmm. as to what they're doing and get over yourself. And, and I say that as delicately as I can because I believe as leaders and parents, they believe they're the reason. Well, they are. It starts with you, but it's not about you. Ask your kids what it is they want and help them get to where they want to go. But take your ego out of it. That is very important. I think so. And I'm, I'm just, you know, you can't really tell in this interview, but I'm a kid at heart. Mm -hmm. at, at 60, I still believe I'm, I'm a kid. And because I am a kid in my heart, I then can be a kid whenever I want to. Uh, I can compete. I can do all that stuff. But when I'm really in my, in my space, it's when I'm having fun. So that's, that's what I want my kids to, to take away from our relationship is dad was always straight up. Mm -hmm. But he, uh, he was fun. He was fun to be around. The truth of love. <laughs> yeah, it is. And, and then the tough stuff, quite frankly, and we talked about that on the panel, is I, I invite conflict because it helps us grow. I'm not looking for a fight, but I'm, I'm not going to avoid it. And when I see it, I, I let, let's talk about it. What just happened? What did I do wrong? What could I have done better? And I love this question is, how can I be a better dad today? How can you be a better mom today? How can I be a better leader today? And it, it, I believe when we're curious, authentically curious, and we ask questions about the people who are following us, how can we do better? The person we want to do better for is the person should be answering the question, not uh, us. That is such great perspective. It works. I mean, again, I don't, I don't make leadership development any more difficult than it needs to be. Mm -hmm. How may, I be a, how may I be a better leader today? Uh, approach. Ask. Ask Susie. Ask John. Ask Steve. What can I do today to help you? Not appease you, but help us get to where we want to go. And, and let's stop saying, my door is always open. I'm, I'm approachable. Well, approach. Mm -hmm. You know, go and, go and see somebody. Go, go and hear somebody. Go, go and appreciate someone. Go value some, somebody. And then... When you walk away, they may say, who was that? Because they haven't seen that part of you. Well, let them see that part of you. And I call it vulnerability. I mean, I didn't make vulnerability sexy. Brene Brown did. Oh, yes, Brene Brown. <laughs> and if you want to you wanna go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Brene Brown about it, vulnerability, I, I wish you luck. Because it's, it's courageous. And I've been saying that for nine years now, yeah. ever since I saw her. But anyway. She's an amazing author. Um, as, a, as a father, what is there any parenting books that you attribute to your success that help you with the mindset or anything else, like an external factor? I don't know. Then most of it is uh, reading articles about other issues that maybe another family had gone through or a particular, like my son is autistic. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that until we adopted him from Russia. And now we're just now learning it. Unfortunately, he's, he's 13. 
long story short, reading about it and, and again, understanding, oh my gosh, that's why, that's why, that's why. And then now that we understand Sam better, I, we can all parent him better. But uh, you can sit there and, and treat everybody the same. That's not going to work. Mm-hmm. Even, if they're, even if they're from the same two people, everybody's special. Everybody's unique. Uh, and I mean special as in they're, they're special to us, right? Now, they may not be special at school, but they're special to us, and they need to be seen as unique individuals. So that, that would be my only advice. Don't try and put all the kids in the same basket. Yeah. And tailor fit individually their needs. I'm, I'm glad I had that. Yeah. Really. So blessed. Wow. Yeah. That's an amazing thing. Just to, you know, your journey as a father and it, 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 it falls into every aspect of life and in your career as well. Yeah. And I've said this at least a hundred times since I've started my company. I've learned more about leadership than I, than from my kids than I have from any certification or any book I've read. Because it's real life. Mm-hmm. And I love, and I'll leave you with this. I believe if you want real relationships, you need to have real conversations. And in order to have real conversations, you have to want to understand where the other person's coming from. And, and I said it on stage earlier today, there's the, there's the stance and the position and the issue. Okay, that's, we know that's going on. Mm-hmm. But what are your interests and what are mine and where do they overlap? And if we can focus on that area of intersection between your interest and mine, the issue and the stance and the position you take might even go away if I truly understand where it is you're coming from. Now, whether I'm the parent or the child or the leader or the subordinate or whatever, that doesn't really matter to me. The title doesn't matter. It's how are we relating and who's going to be the bigger person and say, let's visit. Let's, let's, let's prepare what it is we want to share. And, and I pretty much guarantee if you come with an open heart mm-hmm. and an open mind, you can solve anything with anybody. That's powerful. Yeah. Wow. I love the father power because that's definitely something that we strongly need in, you know, worldwide. And what an incredible story and of yeah. patience and love. And can't wait to hear more, you know, about the journey, the success. Um, it's been a pleasure chatting with you, me, getting me to well. know you. Is there anything else that you would want to share? Yeah, I would say, think about today what you want on your tombstone when you're not here anymore. Because I I guarantee you, your title will never be on your tombstone. The name of your company will never be on your tombstone. How people saw you and specifically the people you raised or were you influenced, they're the only people that are going to have anything to do with what's on your tombstone. So behave that way. Behave the way you want to be remembered. Because at some point, you are going to be remembered. You're not going to be able to make up anything. And start today. I mean, if you're you're a you-know-what, stop being a you-know-what. Be kind and be considerate and be humble. And that's that's what I'd leave you with. That is amazing. Seriously, thank you for sharing that. That That's so incredible. And uh, we look forward to, you know, you continuing to instill in the children and, and continue to impact the world. Yeah. Literally. Thank you for your time. My pleasure. I appreciate you. Yeah. Wow.